my name is Sarah and today I wanted to film a video talking about my labor and delivery story. I wanted to film this video because when I was pregnant I was constantly on YouTube trying to find other videos that could possibly help me prepare for my labor and delivery. When I first found out I was pregnant I was really interested in doing a natural birth. I didn't want to have an epidural or um, any pain medication to help me along the way. I was really interested in doing it without any of that because I felt that we as women are meant to carry babies and deliver them without any medication at all. So when I was on YouTube, I really couldn't find any videos that could help prepare me. So that's why I'm filming this for you. Um, my due date was June 1st of 2016. And I went about 40 weeks and 4 days. So I was interested in obviously doing the induction because my boyfriend has a job where his schedule is a little bit unpredictable and he's constantly traveling so we realized we had to schedule an induction and that kind of bummed me out because I was really wanting to go into labor naturally and, and, and feel what it's like to um, experience the contractions or a possible water breakage but I unfortunately couldn't do that so we scheduled our induction on June 5th at 4 a.m. Luckily that same morning slash the night before, I started experiencing I, what I thought were early labor symptoms where I was experiencing the cramping. Um, I wasn't entirely sure if it was in fact contractions because I experienced um, cramping throughout my entire pregnancy. So I was, con I was constantly waking up in the middle of the night um, with these pains and I just went to bed because I didn't think anything of it. And then that morning of my induction, I woke up at 2.45 a.m. to start getting ready. And I still felt the cramping, so I decided to time them. And when I ended up timing them, they were coming every four to five minutes, lasting about a minute to a minute and a half. And they lasted up until I got to the hospital around 3.45 a.m. So they did last an hour, which indicates um, that you are in, in fact, labor. So we ended up getting into going to the hospital. We got there at 3.45 and we got admitted to our room right away because I already registered weeks and weeks before. So I changed into my gown, they got my IV in because I had to get my set two rounds of antibiotics because I'm GBS positive. So I had to fully be loaded up with the antibiotics before I could even start the Pitocin or anything like Pitocin that. Pitocin is what they use to induce people. Pitocin is, an, is it's, it's mimic, mimicking the natural hormones that are released when you go into labor. So when they put Pitocin into your IV, they are trying to start labor artificially in a way. Um, so I didn't really know that much about Pitocin until I, I actually got induced because I wanted to go into labor naturally, so I never really asked. So I really advise people to ask and find out all about Pitocin and possible induction methods. Um, it's important to also note that I was three centimeters already going into my induction. I've been three centimeters since I was 37 weeks pregnant. So that was kind of like a good start um, leading into my induction. So I wasn't starting from nothing. And I was also 70% 70, 70 effaced. I ended up getting my first round of antibiotics at 5 a.m. And then two hours later, I got my second antibiotics at 7 a.m. And that is when my OB, Michelle, came in to check on me and kind of... In, and kind of inform me about what was going to happen throughout the whole pro the whole procedure. Around 8 a.m. is when she started my Pitocin. She informed me that it was going to be intense and the contractions were going to come on strongly. So I was trying to prepare myself for that. I also want to note that I felt pretty confident about the contractions because when I would experience my periods before I got pregnant, I would get really extremely bad, painful cramping where sometimes I would either pass out or end up throwing up. I would have to miss work or school. So I was kind of relating what the contractions would feel like based on the periods that I've that have happened to me in my past. So I really wasn't that afraid at this point. So after I got my Pitocin administered, I did feel contractions. They were in fact more painful than the cramping I was experiencing before I got to the hospital, but they're very tolerable. When my nurse came in, she ended up checking me and I ended up being four centimeters. So I progressed already a centimeter within a half an hour, an hour. And she came in and she was looking at my monitor and she's like, you're experiencing pretty, you know, severe contractions. Do you feel them? And I said, yeah, I was pretty positive about the whole thing. And I was just munching away on ice chips and popsicles because that's what I was limit limited to at first. And after that, Michelle came in and she said, I'm really confident that you will be able to labor 
um, and have this labor naturally because the baby's head is down and they're monitoring her heartbeat the whole time. So they felt confident that I wouldn't need a C-section. So my, my OB actually said that I could have any food I wanted. She said just don't eat any junk food or anything greasy. And I didn't really feel comfortable because I, I felt nervous because that's not really what people do. They only are limited to ice. So I only, I kept it pretty easy. I only snacked on some crackers and to kind of help get something in my system so that I wouldn't um, end up being sick or anything like that. So Michelle, my OB, ended up coming in after 8 o'clock and she said, Sarah, um, your water hasn't broken down on its own, so if it doesn't, I'm going to break it around 9 a.m. And after that, the contractions will definitely be a lot more intense. So my water did not break on its own. 9 a.m. came and she said, I am going to break your water with this hook-like um, hook -like figure. And she... I was really nervous for that because a lot of people say it's painful. She said that it will feel uncomfortable. And um, I was nervous for that, but I ended up letting her do it, and it wasn't painful at all. I didn't feel anything. It was just a release of pressure, and it actually made things feel better. Um, but she was right. Right after that, and I sort of, that's when the, the intensity of the contractions really kicked in. It was painful. I couldn't sit down on my butt at all. I had to either be standing or walking or leaning over my boyfriend at, from time to time. Um... The nurses and my OB informed me that if I remained in a position where my hips were open, so like Indian position, it would help progress the labor and move the, the head um, down my cervix. I tried doing that and I'm not going to lie, that was actually the most uncomfortable position possible because I felt everything. I felt the baby moving down my cervix. It was a lot of pressure and I didn't really know how to, to tolerate all of that. So I ended up not staying in that position for even more than 10 minutes and I was constantly walking or leaning over or just standing and trying to push through the pain. Um, I also wanted to touch base on the fact that I never I never took any classes or anything um, that could help me with my breathing or any coping mechanisms that could get me through the pain. I kind of just like listened to my body and really depended on my boyfriend. He was such a great help. I, I just, I got through all the contractions by breathing and just realizing that you do get a break. I think it's important to note that you get a break between each contractions. Whether it's a minute or even 30 seconds or 10 seconds for that matter, it's, you need to know you get a break and, and you can get through it. So that's what, that's what I did. I'm not saying that it was easy, but, um, it helped me. So I also wanted to make it clear in my birth plan that I didn't want to get checked that often. Um. Being the fact that I was trying to do this without any pain medication, I wanted to get checked on my own when I wanted to. I wanted to get checked at my absolute breaking point because I didn't want to get discouraged if I was still at four centimeters, if I was still four centimeters dilated and I only progressed to like five centimeters within hours. That would it would just be discouraging, and I feel like I would I would ask for the epidural at that point. So it ended up getting to 10 a.m. and. I was just interested. I, I was not my breaking point, but I wanted to be checked, and she checked me, and I was six centimeters dilated. I progressed two centimeters within an hour. I thought that was great progress. That was enough to keep me motivated to keep going without any pain medication. I wasn't opposed to getting an epidural. I just, I really wanted to see how far I could go, and I was determined to do so. So I labored for, for a little bit longer, and the pain was extreme. I ended up asking for a birthing ball, which is just a round ball that you can like sit and it, you know, you can bounce up and down to kind of help progress the labor as well. I asked for the birthing ball and I sat on it for maybe a fraction of a second and it was too painful, too awkward. I got off that immediately and um, I ended up finding a position that was really comfortable for me. Before I went into labor, I looked up videos and saw that some people um, would get into the doggy position on the bed and that would help relieve the pain and I was completely against that because I thought that that looked awkward and it, and it was embarrassing um, but it turns out that was the position I was in the entire time and I didn't care at that point I kept experiencing um, hot flashes at this point as well I was constantly sweating or I was cold and it just kept going back and forth and I'm pretty modest of a person I get embarrassed really easily so I was just kind of afraid to take off my my um, gown and take, put it back on but at that point when you're in labor and you're in that much pain you don't care what anybody thinks so I was I was at that point just naked and the nurses were coming in to check on how I was doing and I didn't care at all I didn't think anything of it so I was naked in the dog position on the bed the absolute position I did not want to be in but it's the only thing that helped relieve some of the pain 
and I think that's why I didn't experience any back labor because most women end up going into the doggy position to kind of um, switch the back labor to um, experiencing the contractions in their pelvis. So I'm luckily I think that helped me and I'm really fortunate that I didn't experience a back labor because I hear it's a lot more painful than regular contractions in your pelvis area. So I was grateful for that. And then it ended up getting to about 11 a.m. And that's when the intensity of it really kicked in. I, I couldn't take any more of the pain. So at that point, Michelle came in and we we're kind of talking about um, getting in the tub and seeing how that would be. But I, I needed to get checked first and I was, I was almost at my breaking point then. I was threatening a little bit of getting the epidural. I, was, I didn't know if I could do it any longer. So I got checked again. I, I wanted to be checked and she checked me and I ended up being 8 centimeters. And that was enough validation for me to keep going as well. Um, after that, that is, that was the worst. Uh, up until I was eight centimeters dilated, I also want to note that the full five centimeters that I progressed from three to eight centimeters, that is the exact amount of pain I feel when I would have my period. So I'm glad that I have experienced that pain full of cramping, um, before I got pregnant because I could relate them to the contractions and it was easy to get through. It was easy for me at least, but right up until the eight centimeters, it was painful. Right at that 8 centimeter mark is when the intensity of these contractions literally skyrocketed. I, I didn't know that it was possible to feel that much pain. I felt the baby just move down even further. It, the pressure, like I said, I couldn't sit on my butt. It, it got to that point where the doggy style position wasn't helping at all. Um, throughout my contractions that I felt um, before the 8 centimeters, I didn't really make a lot of noises. I wasn't screaming or anything like that. I was just breathing through them. There was times where I would grab uh, my boyfriend's hand really hard or and stuff like that and maybe make a few noises, but way at 8 centimeters, it got so painful where I, I guess I would end up moaning a little bit. Um, again, I was embarrassed to do that, but like I said, when you're in this position, you don't care at this point. So at eight centimeters, I said, all right, someone check me. I'm at my breaking point. I can't do this. I need to get in the tub. My OB, Michelle, came in and she checked me again. And this is where I felt the most discouraged. I was laboring at eight centimeters for maybe 20 minutes. And she's like, Sarah, you're still at an eight. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be an eight forever. Um, that was around a little bit after 11. And um, I just kept saying, you know, I really want to be fully dilated at noon. I can't labor for, till 3, 3 p.m. or something like that. Hopefully I'm dilated at that noon. I can't, I can't go past noon. She said, Sarah, well, if you can promise that you can get out of the tub if I let you in, if you can get out right away once you start feeling the urge to push, because you cannot deliver in the tub, because th this hospital was not designed to um, let women birth, um, give birth in the tub. So... I was like, yeah, I can do it. I promise I can do it. She goes, well, before I let you get in the tub, let me check you one more time. And even if you don't have the urge to push, just try and push and we'll see if that can further dilate you. And I'm like, okay, like, I don't really know how to push, but I'll try. And I was willing to try because I really wanted this baby out. So at that point, you know, minutes went, minutes went by and stuff like that. And I was around what, probably 1150 and she checked me again. And at eight centimeters and she said when you feel another contraction push so I did I did that and when I pushed I pushed to 10 centimeters it was like 8 to 10 in a matter of seconds she's like Sarah you're not getting in that tub you're gonna have this baby like now we're gonna start pushing right now and I'm like no I want to get in the tub I couldn't get let I couldn't let that tub like get out of my head I really wanted to go in the tub because I wanted the the warmth of the water to help relieve the pain but at that point, I had to accept that I was fully dilated and I had to start pushing. So it was not like the movies at all where like a bunch of nurses come in and swarm the room and you feel overwhelmed and the lights are on you. It was, it was so relaxing. My experience was I had my boyfriend Jericho next to me and my nurse that was amazing and Michelle. And that was it. Three people in the room. That's what I wanted. So she said, okay, if you want to push, you can push. They put my feet in, st in, in stirrups and... Um, I was very nervous, so I did probably three practice pushes. I just wanted to kind of feel what it was like. Most people feel like um, to, like you're pushing, like you're having a bowel movement. And for me, that wasn't the case. Um, it didn't really feel like that. But uh, it felt more like you're just pushing. You had to really curl your chin down it, into your chest and just push with all of, all of your power into your pelvis area, not so much your bottom area. So that was kind of difficult. 
especially um, going into that with no pain medication. So at that point, my legs are wide in the air and I didn't care. And um, I ended up not feeling any more of the contractions in my pelvis. That was probably the most, this is the most painful part for me of my entire labor and delivery. I ended up feeling the contractions in my legs, which I didn't know anything about. No one really told me that you could feel that. And I kept saying to my OB, I was like, Michelle, I, I can't feel my legs. My legs are so painful. They hurt. I can't stop moving them. I don't know what's wrong. She goes, Sarah, you're experiencing the contractions in your legs. And you would think that that would feel better than feeling it in your pelvis, but it didn't. It hurt worse because your legs are up in the air, so you can't put them down. So the constant pressure in your legs and them also being raised up, um, it was, it was, it was excruciating. It was, the pain was just unbearable. So that was hard to get through. I ended up doing a couple more pushes and I also had a mirror in front of me to help motivate me so I could see where the head was. Um, going in this without any pain medication, I, I wanted to see what I was doing and what my body could possibly do and where the baby's head was so that I would get motivated and not feel discouraged at all. So that's why I requested the mirror. Many people might think that's weird and I did it at first, but, um, that helped me immensely. So I have the mirror there to help guide me through the entire pushing process. And I pushed a couple times and it was, it was painful. Um, getting the head, getting the head, um, to push down through the birth canal was, it was, it felt impossible. I wanted to give up. At that point I was so tired and I just kept looking to my boyfriend saying like, I just want to go to sleep. I felt so selfish because I didn't even care about pushing. I wanted to go to sleep. I was constantly closing my eyes. That's probably why I had no energy to push. So now I understand why a lot of women get the epidural so they can, they can save their energy for the pushing process. So I was kind of regretting that. And at the 10 centimeters, I was requesting the epidural when I was already pushing because I was just kind of out of it. So everybody was laughing at me and said, no, you can do this. So I believed them and I tried pushing even more and I could only ever push at a time three pushes and that really wasn't getting me anywhere at all. I could barely see the head and Michelle kept saying, you're going to, you're going to push this baby out. You can do it. And, um, I looked at my boyfriend. I felt so discouraged. I felt defeated. And he said, you know, four pushes this time, baby, you can do it four pushes and she'll be out. You just have to try. So the next contraction I felt, um, I really tried to do those four pushes and the third push came and I saw a little bit of her head and I had no energy left in me, but I knew I had to do it for Jericho. He said I could do it, so I gave my, my the biggest push I possibly could, that fourth push, and her head came out so fast I couldn't believe it. And it was the most amazing thing to see that in the mirror. It was it was amazing and, and also scary to see that that big of a head could fit in there. And um, then it was next to deliver the shoulders and that is where my OB helps um, deliver because she has to get one shoulder out first and, instead of getting both at the same time. So I also had to help push through the contractions and then at that point I ended up being able to reach down and pull my baby out myself and put her onto my chest and she was a girl and she was healthy and she was beautiful and she didn't cry that much but it was it was amazing. I got to do skin to skin right away. That's what I wanted. We also did the delayed cord clamping and um, it was amazing. She didn't have to be taken away to get weighed or measured or anything like that. The nurses were so confident that she was healthy and she didn't um, inhale any of the meconium, which is their first poop. And if they do inhale that, they have to take them away to work on their lungs because it can, um, it can affect their breathing. So I was really lucky to be able to do that skin to skin and enjoy that moment with her. Um, but it was such a surreal moment. Um, they always say that when you see your baby for the first time, it's uh, it's just indescribable, and, it, and it's true. It's in fact that's exactly what it is. It was the most amazing time of my life, and seeing Jericho get to cut the cord and everything in that moment, I didn't even care about anything that happened. I didn't care about the pain. Locking eyes with her and trying to breastfeed right away was that's all that mattered to me. It was amazing. Um, so after I was able to do skin to skin with my daughter, they took her away and they weighed her and she weighed seven pounds, 7.7 .7 ounces, and she was 20 and a half inches long. Um, it, it was amazing. It was, it was crazy to think that she was that long and I'm such a small person and she weighed what normal babies weigh, the average amount of babies weigh. And um, it was the best time of my life. And we ended up naming her Layla Jo. And she's beautiful. She's everything I, could have ever imagined and 
it was the best time and the most memorable thing that's ever happened to me. And I'm really happy that I got to film this video so that I could possibly help others who want to do labor naturally or people who are just interested in this entire process. Um, so stay tuned to other videos. I'm going to film my postpartum videos and I'm also going to film things that they don't tell you about pregnancy and labor and maybe I'll bring my newborn in and you can see her and I can also talk about baby must-haves and mommy must-haves and we can kind of touch base on all of these important things that moms want to know about. So I'm glad you watched this video and I hope you enjoyed and please subscribe and look forward to other videos coming from me. Thank you.